Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you for joining us for a very special broadcast here at the Church of God of the Apostolic Faith International Ministerial Association located at 527 Markwith in Greenville, Ohio. This is our new ministerial headquarters as well as our new church launch of the Tabernacle, which we will be having a dedication service uh, this coming month, July the 15th, 16th, and 17th. 15th will be the ribbon cutting at 5 o'clock, an open door uh, fellowship. We're going to have light refreshments. Going to let you look at the facility and do a ribbon cutting. That's from 5 to 6, 6 o'clock. District Elder Sylvester Alls from Toledo, Ohio. From True Light Pentecostal Holiness Church will be with us. And that is my spiritual father and uh, overseer, as well as Bishop Roberts, uh, overseer and spiritual father, uh, and apostolic covering. Uh, then on Saturday at six o'clock, we're going to be back here and we're going to have Pastor Mark Kina, uh, of the Sydney Apostolic Temple, uh, with us going to be a very powerful, explosive night with miracles healing, signs and wonders following the believers. Uh, we're so excited about what God is doing. And then we are going to finish it up with Bishop Andy Roberts, who is with me as well, who is the presiding prelate of the Church of God. He is no stranger to us. He is also the senior pastor of the new work here, uh, which is the Tabernacle. And so we are just looking forward to his word that he has uh, that Sunday night at six o'clock as well. And we will close it out. Services will be every Friday at uh, six o'clock. And we will also uh, instrument the first Thursday of each month for a ministry called CIA, which is Christians in Action. Uh, this coming August the 4th will be the Pregnancy Center, Right to Life, uh, and a few other people, including Bishop Robert, speaking to us about life wins. Life wins. So we definitely want to make sure that uh, you tune in for those. Now, let's get down to the subject at hand. Before we do that, let me just say, this is probably the first time you've done Video, right? Since we've been here, yes. So yes. this is Bishop Bowen's office. Uh, background: This is his office. Just so you know, uh, I know he's very happy about it. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, he loves his office. So, yeah, I spent most of my time here in my office. You know, with ministerial stuff, trying to get uh, license ordination stuff out, trying to get the bylaws done, trying to get everything up and running, programs together. So. Probably about 90% of my life is actually spent in this little room here. Well, big room. And it is probably one of the most nicest offices that I have ever had. And I'm telling you, this place is nice. And if you come out on the 15th, you can see it. So Yes. And you can also see my... Uh, other bishop's office right next door that is so small. It's not nearly as big, not even a, a quarter of the size, but it's all right. It's, it's a cubby hole. So, but it is very nice. And so we're just thankful for what God is doing. Um, but let's get into the talk or into what we really want to talk about today, and that is commercializing the church and marketing the church, uh, church and money. You know, before um, you get into it, let's just make it very clear. We believe in the church. Absolutely. We love the church. You know, we are the church. So we didn't move to Greenville, Ohio, because we didn't believe in the church and the message of the church, which is Jesus, right? So, um, so let's make it very clear before we start. We believe 100% in the church. Um, right off the bat. I'd rather be part of the church than be part of the world any day. 
And, and let's make it very clear. You want to stay tuned. You want to call somebody up right now because we're about to give you some spiritual meat. Now, you're talking to two bishops that doesn't care to overturn tables in the spiritual realm. We don't care to bring you the truth of the Word of God. And that is what we're going to do. If you want some meat and you want some knowledge, you want some understanding of the Word of God, you need to tune in right now and call somebody up and tell them, hey, go to YouTube, go to Facebook, find this post, send them the link and have them to join in because uh, we're about to get into some very, very controversial, deep talk and discussion on the church, money, and commercializing the body of Christ. And one thing you'll know about us is that we're not afraid to talk about the issues, good or bad. Good or bad. We'll bring it out and we'll bring you what you need to know. So the church, it plays a very crucial role in every community, and it is of the utmost importance, Bishop, that we maintain a good report. The church is a place that was once about lost souls. But now we have become to the place that we have like a celebrity occult. Uh, it's about placing pastors on pedestals now. And it's a place where members elevate uh, leaders to a high standard of beauty, achievement, prestige, and power. And this is so wrong on so many levels. While we are to uphold our leaders and we are to regard them in the highest respect and we are to respect them in their places, do you feel that we have gone to a place that we sometimes go overboard with it? Well, I think... We, number one, go overboard, and then there's a point where we don't do enough. <laughs> so okay. we have to learn how to yeah. have a mixture. So first, let's go over the part about going overboard. And let's just make it very clear. This is not all churches. No. Okay. No. Say, well, you're just talking about, you know, my church ain't like that. Well, great. Then stick with it. Um, but not all ch churches, not all pastors are in it for the wrong reasons. Right. But those that are, we're talking to them today. Okay. Right. And those that, um, yeah. So let's start off with saying those that go too far. Mm -hmm. It's very, I mean, all you got to do is turn on TV and you see people commercializing it, making it about money. Um, and I know you're very passionate about that. Um, people that are in it for the money. Um, I think sometimes, like, you and I know certain churches that they can't vote, they can't uh, do anything without asking their leader. And we won't even Correct. put a title to the leaders. Right. Um, but I understand apostolic covering, and I understand the process that, yes, your spiritual leader is very important in your life and there's things that you should not do without consulting with them and so forth. But I also understand that there is a God inside of you and he has given you the Holy Ghost and some things you don't need to check in every single second because that pastor or that bishop uh, has other things to do, and they have other sheep to take care of. But I also understand the spiritual assets of apostolic covering. So where do you define the lines, and and how far is too far? Okay, I mean, let's just be very clear. There are some churches that pract practically worship their leaders. They talk more about their leadership than they do Jesus. And as much as I honor and respect you, as much as I honor and respect uh, my pastor, I don't worship you guys. And mm -hmm. my, my, I don't bow down, I don't worship at the altar of your opinion. While your opinion and your ministry 
and your leadership is important to me, it's not all in all. Um, so I'm very concerned with pe those who lift up their church. Um, <laughs> I used to belong to an organization. Um, they said, well, you can't preach Jesus without preaching the church. Well, let's preach Jesus and let's let everything else fall in line afterwards. Um, so I'm very concerned we have, in, you know, I know of a church locally that they won't even sign a petition unless they get their pastor or their bishop's approval. And to me, you know, I think that that's a little overboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because after all, the Bible says that he gave you the Holy Ghost to guide you into all truth. And so, you know, the Holy Ghost should be the one that is guiding us and leading us. And the Bible said it must first, it must first seem good to the Holy Ghost and then unto us. Well, and I understand the, the concept. You know, we believe in what we call apostolic authority. So when we were under our bishop, our pastor locally, we didn't even preach for like two years. Mm -hmm. You know, we sat under him for two years before he even let us preach for him. And I was okay with that. That was fine. And we believe that if you go out and you preach at a church, you should let your pastor know. Correct? Correct. He knows sometimes more than what you will know. Mm -hmm. And you, you may say, well, I think this church is good. They've invited me to come, so I'm going to go preach for them. I'm going to go sing for them. Well, your pastor may know something that you don't. You say, well, if I ask my pastor, he might tell me no. He's trying to hold me back. Mm -hmm. You won't respond to that. <laughs> well, I think many times pastors know pastors. They know things. They know ministries. They've been around. And it's never to hold a person back. No. Sometimes it is that we see that you may not be developed in certain areas. Sometimes you get out there and you're going to need something more than what you have. So we got to make sure that you're equipped and that you're qualified to go out there because there's a lot of wolves out there. There's a lot of people that can tear your ministry down and you can tear their ministry down if you're unseasoned uh, and, and not... Uh, connected to where you should be connected to. So, you know, there's a lot that goes into uh, apostolic covering. And we don't have time to go into all of that today. But one of the issues that I find uh, in the body of Christ is, or another major issue that I find, is not only placing people on pedestals, but it is that we have started within the church in the last few years uh, this selling of spiritual products uh, such as holy water. When in the name of God did we start selling holy water, anointed oil that we prayed over that is supposed to benefit the body of Christ, selling our entirety, our church t-shirts, our disc holders, our, and even going as far as to say you can't come to a meeting because it's a special meeting and we are holding this church event and it is going to be $49.95. What? Freely give, freely you shall receive is what the Bible says. So my question becomes, why is it do we put so much emphasis in trying to commercialize the body of Christ? Why is it that we are selling out? I'll tell you why it is. It's because we have allowed the spirit of compromise into the body of Christ. And when the spirit of compromise came in, the spirit of Jezebel came in. She overtook the church and the church ain't what it ought to be. 
So now we've got a bunch of manipulating pastors and wolves in the pulpit and people can't recognize it and they're afraid of calling it out because they're afraid that they're going to run somebody out. So the ones that are really truly prophets and prophecies and preachers are uh, got a spirit of intimidation, afraid of calling this thing out because they're afraid that they're going to alienate themselves. Kind of like me and Bishop Roberts, we alienate ourselves all the time because we call things out for what it is. Sin is sin. Wrong is wrong. It doesn't matter who's doing it. So what we have is we have people that are selling things that the Bible tells us that we're supposed to give away. God has given us the knowledge and the wisdom to have those things. He imparted them into us, and yet we're trying to sell the very thing that God has given us. Bishop, you have anything you want to say? Well, I did, but I totally lost it. Uh, Don't be afraid to interrupt me. I mean, this is a conversation. We want to get out there with the people. Times have really changed from what it would, used to be from years ago. I mean, things have always been, there's always been issues with the church, um, but the church has really gone downhill. I'm talking about power and demonstration. Oh, yes, okay. yes. Okay, let's just be honest. I was watching a video the other day of a church I belonged to many years ago, and she asked the question, you know, where's the power? Mm -hmm. You know? You can't ignore that there's a lack of power inside the church. Absolutely. They used to have so much power in the church that they would hug ovens. I'm talking about the old fashioned ovens that you would gather around. They would hold or hug them and be around them and there would be nothing on them. They would not be burned. There were people that would have limbs would literally come back into form and into shape. There were people that would be raised from the dead. You would see a blue haze, the ground would, uh, I've seen the blue haze before. Mm -hmm. The glory was so strong in the church that the blue haze was there. Um, a lot of things that you would see, eyes opened up, uh, COVID. COVID wouldn't even be an issue with the church. Come it on now. It wouldn't even be in the parking lot. Yes. Back in the good old days. But today, you know, we have settled so much. Um, and if you speak out against certain things, the Bible says, and my Paul said, Am I your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. You know, you said that we are alienated at times. I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. Because number one, it's not about me. It's not about what I can get from it. It's about honor to our Lord and Savior and to the house. Mm -hmm. And if people aren't going to do it right, I have no issue. Whether it gives me, you know, I'm, I'm not in it for Facebook likes. I'm not in it for popularity. I'm in Come it to honor our Lord and Savior. And the thing is that people don't want, like you said, they don't want to speak out on certain issues because it might cause them to lose some money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you come right down to it, the Bible says like this. He said that whatever you lose in this earth, you're going to gain it in heaven. He said no man is ever done anything and lost in the end because in the end we gain it in heaven and we've got to do everything that we can to make sure that we make heaven our home and so when we're sold out for the kingdom of God we're going to do everything that we can for the kingdom of God you know we're living in a prosperity gospel age where members are urged to give gener generously to the establishment or to the church and in return it is insurance that they are going to receive blessings or abundant life or they're going to receive uh something great from god and and it's almost like you're buying the gift of god and the bible says that it is a free gift but yet we want to try to bring about a prosperity gospel. And, and don't get me wrong. The Bible says, I wish above all things, brethren, that you may be in good health and that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. But we've got to get our soul prospering before God can really bless us in the body of Christ. 
and he can give us the good things that he desires to give us. He has to make sure that we're going to be faithful because he said if we're faithful in the few things, he's going to make us ruler over the many. So we're living in a time that people wants to make this gospel about prosperity. It's about how big I can build my church. And we here at the Church of God of the Apostolic Faith have never been interested in numbers or money. Okay, let me say that again. We have never been interested in money or in how many people are coming to the church. Because what we look at is what are we doing for the kingdom of God? And if we're doing it for the kingdom of God, that's all that matters. If we are helping one soul, that's what it's about. It is about the kingdom of God. It's not about our church denomination. It's not about our church affiliation, but it is about the kingdom of God. We preach the oneness of God in a lot of churches, but how many of us are coming together as one body? See, we got many members, but yet one body. And we forget about that because nowadays it's about our organization. It's about our uh, thoughts, our process, our goals in the church. And we've left Jesus Christ out of every bit of what we are trying to accomplish in the body of Christ. Many members, yet but one body. And we forget about that. So... You know, this prosperity gospel concerns me. It concerns me very greatly because people are getting rich off of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I have a problem with people getting rich off of the gospel. Look at these preachers on televisions. They are getting millions and millions of dollars they're getting jets and they're getting, you know, even with um, the one woman preacher, she has a gold toilet in her house. It is a proven fact. Who needs a golden toilet in their house? Because she has made the gospel about prosperity. The Bible said, in the book of Acts, they sold everything and they had all things. What? In common. Nowadays, we want to put barriers between people. Oh, I'm going to be your friend because you've got the money. But this poor man on the street, the homeless man, I don't want nothing to do with him. That isn't the gospel of Jesus. We have misscrewed the gospel. The gospel is about the message of Jesus Christ. It's about salvation. Man's need for repentance. Sanctification. Baptism in the name of the Lord Jesus. For the remission of sin. That is the gospel. But yet we've made it about prosperity. And we have commercialized the body of Christ. Bishop. Well let me just be clear <coughs> on this. Would I like to have a big church? a um, thriving church. You know, God's not called us to just survive. He's called us to thrive. Um, now, but people think, well, just because you have 500 people in your church or you have 1,000 people or you have 200 people, that that's a thriving church. Not necessarily. It doesn't mean that it's thriving or that God is there. We know churches that have thousands of people. Of course, if we lower our standards, we could have thousands Oh, yeah, of people. absolutely. So absolutely. numbers don't tell the all-in-all -all story of what's going on inside the house, okay? So let's not make it, so let's make it clear that while we're not looking for numbers, numbers, we'll take numbers. Absolutely. <laughs> um, if somebody is wealthy and they want to give into the church, we're not saying don't give because there is protocols. There is what you call tithing and giving. Uh, there are reasons that the Bible commands these things so that his house might be full so that we can be the arms and the legs and the mm -hmm. feet and the hands of Christ. Because uh, there are people that are hurting and they need help. And the church, 
<laughs> the people of this land do should not be relying on the government. Absolutely. It should be our job taking care of the widows and the orphans and the, you know, and the homeless. It's our job to be doing and these things. Yes. So the church's responsibility. So while we're not seeking numbers, we're not seeking wealth, um, God does command a certain blessing when we do the right thing. He will command a blessing upon us of good mm -hmm, things. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm very weary of people who seek after those things because they want to make themselves, you know, popular or rich. Um, I have a, an issue when you have um, people who have jets. <laughs> they say, well, God don't want me to drive. You know, he, he wants me to prosper and to have nice things. Well, that's a, an, I guess that can be d debated another time, but, um, but we have come a long way. I know people that would move from one area. Now, I think I've told the story before, like, um, I used to hear stories years ago of people who would move from one area to another. Okay. Mm -hmm. They would start churches or they would move and go to, to, to a church that had, let's say, 10 people. 20 people and they didn't think twice because they believed that they heard from God or their bishop or their overseer said go and they trusted God that much that mm -hmm. they went yes and that's, trust. Kind of, and that's kind of how the boat that we're in today we heard the voice of God he said go yes, <laughs> he yes, said yes. go and I will put my name and we left everything behind family friends um, land Everything we had, we left it behind because we wanted to follow God. And I'm thankful that there are still people that are going to go when he says go. That to them, it's not a popularity contest. To them, it's about obeying the voice of God. And we applaud those pastors and those leaders who will obey God. And not only that, but we didn't go on someone else's dime. We invested $40,000 to get here. You know, and so, you know, it wasn't with someone else's dime. It was our money that we had invested in life savings and different things over the period of since 2012. And when we hear the voice of God, we go. But, you know, we're, we're not saying that, you know, you shouldn't give to the local church because we are commanded under Melchizedek and under the word of God according to biblical scriptures, to give 10%. Now, our taxes goes up all the time. You know, politicians wants to raise, 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 raise. But God keeps it very simple, 10% of your income. And then you're to give offerings to the body of Christ as the Lord blesses. So those tithes and offerings goes for the upkeep of the house of God. It goes to make sure that the pastor, because I believe in taking care of the man of God. Don't get me wrong. Because I believe that if he is in full-time ministry, and he should be in full-time ministry if he's your pastor, he should not have to work a secondary job because there is too much to do in the kingdom of God to be out working a second job. If your pastor is working a second job, God bless his heart. But we as the body of Christ should be taking care of our pastors because the Bible teaches us that as the oxen graze the ground, he eats as a reward in the process of plowing the land. And so shall those leaders, as they are giving the gospel, they should be rewarded. I'm not saying nothing against that. I am a firm believer. I'm a firm believer in taking care of ministers that you invite to the body of Christ to preach for you. There is nothing wrong with taking up an offering. We're talking about a prosperity gospel. We're talking about uh, charging for everything that is going on. That is what we're talking about, a manipulation 
that is taking place in the body of Christ. You no, know, Bishop, we've had multiple conferences. You know, that's our job is to hold and host people that would come here. We don't do anything. Um, we do everything we do with excellence. Mm -hmm. We have invited people. When we invite somebody to come out of state or even locally, whose job is it to take care of them? It's our job. It is. And I, I believe that if God is in something, he will provide. He will provide. And he has always provided for us. We're not a big, we've never been a big church. We've never been a wealthy church. Um, but God has always provided. And the Bible is very clear that there's, there should be no lack in the kingdom. There is no lack in the kingdom. So why does the church have lack? That's a whole other subject, I guess, for another day. But when we have invited guests, we paid for their hotels. We paid for the gas. We paid for their foods. When they come, they have always been taken care of by us because that's our responsibility. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, we need to really pray <laughs> and ask for forgiveness if if we think that the only way to do certain things is if we have to charge. Um, perhaps, you know, if God is in it, he will make a way. That's all I'm trying to say. And, and this is the thing. Do we not have enough faith? Pastor, let me speak to you right now. Do you not have enough faith to believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you might think or ask? Pastor, do you not have faith in the Lord? He said it was his house and that he would supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. It's his house. It is not your house. He has placed you there as the shepherd over that house. So if it's his house, he's going to take care of it. You don't have to charge someone for a conference. I have a problem with it. You're in the spirit of Jezebel. You need to sit yourself down is what you need to do and get some real Holy Ghost and some real faith and be obedient to the word of God. The Bible says, go ye therefore. He didn't tell us go therefore and charge them. He said, go ye therefore and make disciples. So I have a problem with church folks that are trying to do this prosperity gospel because the King James calls it filthy lucre in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 3. And the term marketing is just a slimy term for manipulation. Did you hear me? It's just a slimy tactic for the word of manipulation. The church, the church should not have nothing to do with it. The church is the church of the living God. We are called to be separate, to be holy, to be righteous, to be set apart from the world. And honestly, the church of God wouldn't have it no other way than to do it God's way. We believe in the God of the Bible. After all, all Christians... The Bible and the gospel must be the center of everything that we do. That is why we are committed to making the house of God the house of God and not a den of thieves. What is a den of thieves? They were setting up in the house of God selling things and the Lord literally came in and whipped them out of the temple Turned over tables. We want to talk about the love of God, but we don't want to talk about the correction of God. We don't want to talk about the, the, the God who gets upset and angry and mad and frustrated. And he comes in and he sees his house being in the array that it was. And he flipped over tables. He took a whip and he whipped them out. Oh, we don't want to talk about that. God is a God of love and a God of grace and a God. Yes, he is. But he's also a God of wrath and a God of vengeance and a God that if he would come into most of our churches, would turn our tables over and whip us out of the house of the living God because we have made it into a den of 
seeds. That is what we've made it. We've got all of these selling things. If some of you all would just stop stealing from God and being thieves, you're not Christians if you're not paying your tithes. If you would just take care of of your obligations as a Bible-believing Christian, pay 10% of your income, there would be no need for selling anything. Now, I understand smaller churches that has to go out and do a bake sale or whatnot in their community or, you know, out of their house or whatnot because some of you all are too lazy and hypocritical to give out of the necessity of your income. But when you come right down to it, God has commanded the church to take care of the widows, the orphans, as Bishop Roberts talked about. Paul commanded the church to do it, not the United States government. Now, many of you all may not like Pastor um, Greg, Locke. Greg Locke. Thank you, Bishop. But you know what he does? He pays every single person that goes to his church as a widow's rent every single month. Every month. He takes care of the orphans. He takes care. He is a biblical pastor and he gives till they are broke if need be. That is kingdom principles. That is a biblical pastor. See, God didn't call us to build up our bank account. If we're building up our bank account and we got two and three hundred thousand dollars in our uh, trust accounts or our bank accounts or our building funds, we have a problem, Houston. Hello, somebody. We have a problem. We are not doing what God has called us to do, and that is go out and make disciples. How much difference would that be if we would take that money and invest it in the kingdom of God, invest it in the homeless, invest it in the widows and the orphans, invest it in the body of Christ getting the gospel out, invest it in missionaries. See, but our problem is we're trying to build up bank accounts and trying to outdo one another and the church has never been about a competition. It's not about your church or your denomination. We are all baptized into the body of Christ and we are all in the same body. Many members, but yet one body, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, the church of God. We are the body of Christ and we need to get out of this competition mode of trying to build up our bank account, trying to outdo one another in worship music, in preaching, <clears throat> and all of the things that we are seeing done. Because Paul calls it filthy luger. Got anything, Bishop? Doing good. See, this is where we're at. We're all familiar with the Great Commission. If you're not familiar with the Great Commission, you've not read your Bible. The Great Commission is the reason the very church of God exists. And that, that commission is a commission of do. It is to go therefore and make disciples, baptizing every one of them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, the singular name, the name of, what is the name of, whatever you do in word and deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. It is in the name of Jesus Christ. Repent ye every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and be baptized and receive ye the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, which is Jesus, and teaching them to obey every command that I have given you. The commands including giving, tithing, Yes, this is biblical, but what is not biblical is all of this prosperity gospel message that some of these churches are preaching. See, you can be passionate about Jesus being the center of the approach of some of the marketing tools that are out there. When it says, go ye therefore into all of the world, 
you know, using things like YouTube, Facebook, internet, websites. This is all ways of getting your message out. But, because, it, let's be honest, there's billions of people out there. And people that you and I may never reach, Bishop, we can reach through the internet. We can reach through the website. I mean, let's just be honest, times have changed from what they were 20, 30, 40 years ago. And we can reach millions of people just on a drop of a bucket, just like that. So I believe that there are tools that we need to use by all means, use them and use them well. Um, don't make a fool of yourself while you're using these tools, but use them well. Um, so I'm very thankful that God has placed tools in the church for us to use. Um, so use them and use them well. But the Bible talks about go ye therefore in all of the world. So, so we should use certain tools to reach people. But let me be very clear. While we are passionate about church marketing in certain areas, we got to ask ourselves the question, why are we doing it? Is it for souls or is it for filthy lucre? Is it for money? It better be, my friend, about souls and seeing souls added to the kingdom of God. Friend, Jesus doesn't need your marketing plans. Let me say that again. Jesus does not need your marketing plan. He set this thing up from the beginning. He wrote it in Genesis. He ends it in Revelation. And he gives us a design and a plan. <clears throat> what he needs is your faith. He needs your obedience. God has given many of us gifts. He's given many of us tools. And let me say the church is not a business. I hate when they put us in the category of being a business bishop because we're not about a business. The only business we are about is the Father's business. We're not a business in the manner of saying about money. Because we're not a marketing tool to set up different platforms to create money and create jobs and things. Because the Bible said freely give, freely receive. So if I get something from the Lord, I'm to bless my neighbor with it. So if the pastor gives me a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom that I really didn't see in the scripture, I'm to share it with my neighbor. I'm not to charge my neighbor $29.95 for this word. You know, we got people that call themselves prophets. Out prophesying. Prophelying. Send me $29.95 and I'll send you the word of the Lord. Really? Where in the world did you find that in Scripture? You're a Jezebel. And you should be called out. The devil cast it out of you and you sat down. Because you lost all credibility. You're full of the devil. You're full of witchcraft. But we got this going on in the body of Christ. We have commercialized the church. That we have lost our value. We have lost our salt. We have lost our flavor. And people now can't tell the church from the world because the church has got too worldly and the world is out too churchy. And we've got a bunch of people out there that thinks that they can buy their way into the kingdom of God just like Simon, Simeon did. <coughs> the apostles laid hands on the people of God in Acts chapter 1 or chapter 8. And they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And Simeon came and thought that he could buy it. And that's the way we are in the church today. God has given us a gift. Given us a talent to preach and minister the word of God. But yet we will not go by faith. We have to have a certain amount. We have to fill out this program.
program and that program. How many is going to be at our church? We we have to fill out all of these forms and we got to have all of this stuff in, in decoration. But my God, give us some spirit-filled preachers that understands faith in going and preaching for the real reason. And that is for lost souls in the kingdom of God. It's all about souls. Bishop? Well, years ago, <laughs> you know, the church has changed over the years, okay? Years ago, I think we've talked about this a lot. Years ago, we didn't do things in the church because we wanted to pay. Correct. We cleaned the church, not paid. We taught Sunday school. Guess what? Not paid. Guess what? The treasurer, not paid. Secretary, not paid. Song leader, worship leader, musicians, guess what? Not paid. Today, I'll play your drums for you. I'll play your organ for you. I'll play your piano for you. But you got to pay me. I'll be your worship leader, but you got to pay me. So we have really drifted a long way from what we were years ago. And I know we would go to church, you know, and even since we started this, we've gone hundreds of miles to visit churches, just to visit, not even just to preach. Right. But to build to, kingdom relationships. But to be kingdom minded, to help build relationships and to help build their church up. Because that's what it's about. It's about building each other up. As, yes. as you said earlier, we're not in no competition with one another. We're here to build up. Um, and even like in the past year, we've gone to Dayton many times and, you know, we don't ask nothing in return. And we never have. So I remember I would go, I would take my church when I began pastoring many years ago. Um, and the first church I pastored, you know, <laughs> we would have a thousand dollars in ties. Of course, the, the organization that I lived in or that I worked that I was part of, they would give the ties to the pastor. Well, that thousand dollars or twelve hundred, I think it was twelve hundred bucks <throat> the first month I was there. Um, guess what? I had to pay half of that towards the bills <laughs> because we would have more bills than we would have income coming in. So I had to build the church up in, in order. But a lot of pastors, they had to do that. So, but we would go from so we would have church on Sunday, Sunday night. We would have church on Tuesday. We would go Friday to a rally, let's say Kentucky. Saturday, guess what we'd be in? Indiana or s Southern Ohio for another revival or youth rally. We went to district conventions and youth conventions and mm -hmm. revivals without even the concept of being paid for it, just to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. Because we love God and we loved our fellow brother. Um, so I have to ask the question, if if we would invite you to our church and you say, well, am I going to be paid for it? <laughs> to be honest with you, we don't need them. Right. Because we never did things with even the thought of how much am I being paid? We did it because we love God and our fellow brother. And, and the Bible says out of the heart, the mouth do speaketh. So for you to even ask questions like that to a pastor, it has to be in your heart and your motives are wrong because we've got people that will not even go across the street without being paid. And we have commercialized the church so much and we've taught people this demonic demon principle that you have to be paid in order to do. And yet the Bible said freely give, freely receive. And, you know, it is God that has placed that gift in you and you are charging for a gift that God given you. You're charging for the word of the living God to go forth. And yet we wonder why we have no power and no authority in the body of Christ. Look where we have come from and look where we're at now. And, and you know, let's be honest. You know, let's say I invite you to come preach for me. I'm not going to let you leave without giving you a love offering. Right. Because that's how I operate. Right. Right. You know, I believe that you should honor the man of God and you should honor Absolutely. them 
if they're going to labor in prayer and get a word from the Lord, you ought to honor the man of God for his time and, and his effort. Um, so that's not what I'm saying that you should just always come free. You know, that's not what I'm asking or saying. There is a time to honor, but there's a, a time to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. And there's been times where we have gone into our church, we have preached for them, they have lifted us an offering. Guess what we did? We gave it back because we wanted to be a blessing. And sometimes, you know, but again, you know, we have drifted. So let's go to another part of this. <laughs> so what about churches who bring in people that are worldly to entertain us? I'm not interested in being, oh, my. I know this is a very touchy subject for you, but we bring in people into the house of God. Years ago, the house of God was the holies of holies. You didn't just let anybody behind your pulpit. But today we just bring in, oh, we can get a good crowd with this guy. Oh, we can get good money, a good fundraiser for, for this guy. Go I, back to money and numbers. I have an issue with that. Because, okay. because anybody that stands behind my pulpit, number one, you will be living holy and you will be anointed. And if you're not, because to me, it's not about, it's not about being entertained. I don't want to be. It's about the anointing. I don't want to be entertained. I'm sorry. If I want to be entertained, I can go watch TV. I can get on the internet. I can go elsewhere. I don't want, I want the anointing. I want something that will change my life. life changing, Not yes. only change yes, my life, yes, but change yes. those around me. Those yes, who enter yes, into yes. our church, I want them, I want chains broken. And yes. I want addictions, you know, broken off of people. So we don't want entertained. So if, if you think that impresses me, I, I go to churches and they carry on and they do a great job with the music. There was a comment made last Last night, I can't remember what he said, but pretty much what he was saying was, you know, 95% of what we do is emotionalism. Yes, yes. You know, we've learned how to dance. We've learned how to sing. We've learned how to raise our hands. And we've learned how to do all these things. And some churches is even taught them how to so-called speak in tongues. But there's no power. No there's power. No delivering power. No glory. And we're not interested in that. And this is why we're doing this today. It's not to demean the church. It's to push the church to manifestation. Because when you're relying in the arm of the flesh, God doesn't want that. He wants this church to be led by the Spirit. So oh, yeah. if we're going to rely on the arm of the flesh, we might as well pack it up because we're just like the world. And I'm not interested in Jesus telling me, you know, Depart from me. Depart from me. I didn't know you. Well, Jesus, I cast out devils. Jesus, I like, you know, I healed the sick. You know, I got people saved under my ministry. He, he's going to say, I never knew you. And I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in playing church. I want to become the church. I posted on Facebook today. We have been coming to church, but we haven't been come, becoming. Mm -hmm. Going to church, but we're not the church. And some things have got to change. It does. It does. And it starts with people understanding that we do not need marketing tools. We don't need uh, communicational gifts. We don't need you coming into the church trying to pretend to be something that you're not. We need real, authentic men and women who loves God. And that has a pure heart and a pure motive and that wants to build up the body of Christ. And let's be honest, <laughs> the prophets of old would call you out. They they would, and that's one of the reasons. <laughs> and that's why we are feared, because we are what we say we are. And you wouldn't dare, if you dare try to put on an act, they will call you out. I've been in church services in the days of old where if you came in backslid, guess what? You were called out on it. Absolutely. The Holy Ghost would have your number. And I remember one day that the Holy Ghost pulled back the veil on my overseer and called him out. Those days are not over. Back in the Bible days, guess what? They dropped down dead. They did. And those they days did. are not over. We're going back 
to the glory days, and you're going to see a stronger manifestation of that glory in the days to come. And, and why did they fall dead? Because they, they kept yeah. they kept the portion of the money. It was filthy lucre and greed, same the way it is in the body of Christ. You know the the it all goes back to money and filthy lucre, and you know. God gives us gifts. He expects us to use those gifts to bless the body of Christ. He didn't give you those gifts to get rich off of or to make money off of. But he said, freely give, freely you shall receive. He said, go ye therefore heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead. You know, um, but somehow people need to understand the word church and market, marketing don't sound right in the same sentence. They don't sound right together, you know, because we as the church, we've been called out to be a separated people, to taste not, touch not, handle not the unclean things. And he said, then I, the Lord thy God, shall receive you. And as far as Bishop Roberts, you were talking about uh, people coming into the church to be entertained. We got a lot of that going on. We do. We got a lot of that going on. They're so gifted and so talented, and we'll use them for our praise and worship. My God, help us, Holy Ghost. You all need to sit down. We need some anointed men and women of God that will preach the unadulterated word of God and preach with the demonstration and the power of God with a fivefold ministry and all nine spiritual gifts in operation. And you are not really a biblical church if you do not have all nine spiritual gifts and the fivefold ministry working in your church. I'm sorry. But the true church of the living God, it's time for you to stand up because we need to understand that some of these people that are phonies needs to sit down in the church of God and we need to rise up and say, hey, enough is enough. I don't care how how uh, talented you are. If there's no anointing and the anointing is what it takes to break the yokes and destroy the stronghold in people's life. Listen, people are going through hell right now. They're going through all kinds of uh, demonic attacks and they need the church of the living God to be the church of the living God with demonstration with power where signs and miracles and wonders are following them that believe in the name of the Lord Jesus they need a word from heaven they don't need you up there preaching uh, this candy uh, gospel message but they need the real genuine word of the living gospel of Jesus Christ that is going to change their life. They need people that has a God-given talent to bring uh, words of knowledge and wisdom to the body of Christ to be used in their gifts. And that is what we need in the body of Christ. Listen, the Bible said the church is for whosoever will, let him come. I say, praise the Lamb of God. Let the homosexual come. Let the adulterers come. Let the thief come. Let the stealers come. Let everybody come. Whosoever will, let him come. But there is a dividing line, my friend. It's called an altar. Until you've been to the altar, <laughs> you can't get behind the pulpit where the glory is. <coughs> we have to make sure that they bend to the altar, that they are living what they say they have in order for them to get up behind the pulpit, to sing, to preach, to testify, to do whatever, because God will not bless it. God will turn his back on it and laugh at you in the day of calamity. There is too many Jezebel spirits that is entered into these churches. Why do you think God said there'll be a separation in the last days? He said, I'll separate the reap from the tower. Why do you think there was a separation during COVID? A bunch of coward pastors that did not have the anointing to stand up against the power of Satan and the power of the government to say, hey, your power stops at my door. You're not coming in. You're not closing me down. My Bible tells me that I am to have church that much more as seeing the day approaching. You're not doing to do it here. But we had a bunch of coward pastors that closed down their church and thought that they were going to take government money. And, ah, oh, don't even get me started. <laughs> Bishop, we have people that we love very much. Yes. But they shut down. They compromised. And they wonder why they have no power. They wonder why people aren't being saved today. 
Yes. So, you know, you know, we didn't close it down. But let's be very clear. There is a difference between talent and, and annoying. Anointing. Absolute. And there Absolute. Are, there are some people. Ah, that, yeah. There, there are some people that aren't very talented at all, but they are anointed. Absolutely. And I Come would on never now. have them in my church. Yes. You know, the comment was made last night that we want God to give us the best. Well, Jesus cast the best down from heaven. Ah, oh, come on, man. So, God help us to get those in place, the right people at the right time doing the right thing. Um, God give us anointed ones. And then that comes back to what we were saying earlier. Let's mm -hmm. take this back to, back around the other way. Um, there are some that are lifted up too much. Yes. What about those that are overlooked? Yes. There are some that are very talented. David's hid in the field. Very gifted. Yes, yes, and yes, very yes. very anointed. But where's the church at? They are overlooked by the church. Let me give you a scripture. I wrote this down a little bit. Matthew 13 and 44 says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto the treasure hidden in the field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Okay? So everything I receive from you is determined how I perceive you. Mm -hmm. If I think you're of the devil, if I think you're evil, guess what? I'm not going to receive anything from you. But it's how I perceive you is, how, is what I receive from you. Okay? Mm -hmm. I must perceive you correctly in order to receive from you correctly. If I don't honor you, I can't unlock what is on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. So we wonder why we can't find good leaders. Mm -hmm. Because we don't honor the leaders and we don't get what we get what we deserve. Okay. So if I don't honor you, I can't unlock what is in you. Mm -hmm. When you call out to God for something or you are believing him for something, he wraps a treasure in a field and the field shows up and you don't know the treasure that's in it. And because we don't honor the field, how any treasures, how any treasures, have, how many treasures have we missed because we didn't like the package that God sent the treasure in. Uh, message there. We don't like the package of Bishop Bowling. He's too loud. He's too passionate. He's too boisterous for me. So because we don't like the package, <laughs> we don't receive the treasure. Mm -hmm. So how many packages have or treasures have we missed because we rejected the package? So the Good. Bible says that the Bible says God hides a treasure in the field. Because of the love of the field, he gets the treasure that's in the field. In order to get your treasure, in order to get your gift, in order to get your blessing, you have to honor the field. And I think the church has overlooked many. Yes, 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 and yes. I have a problem. I have a problem when you go into a place and they don't honor you. and They don't respect you. When they're supposed to be, you know, when they can't recognize the gift that is in you. I know we've talked about um, apostolic protocol about entering into a church. Um, a lot of times we go into a church and we just kind of sit back. We don't just go in and try to, you know, be part of it until they release you, mm -hmm. right? But how many people have re not gotten a blessing because they rejected <coughs> the field or the package? Mm -hmm. And I'm very concerned when you have pastors when you had the same people being asked to come speak and you have everybody else being rejected. You invite the same people and you get the same result every time. I have a problem with that. And these are the people that has God given gifts and they've been chosen and the Lord's put in them uh, these special talented or gifts and anointed them for such a time as this. And they're in the church to bless us and to bless the body of Christ. But yet we want to overlook them. They all wanted to overlook David, but he was a fit. He was a treasure healed in the field. And, you know, the prophet, he went around to anoint him. And the Lord's like, no, no, no. And he finally asked the question, said, do you have any other? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, I have one other son. He's in the field. 
and he said, I'll pretty much wait here until you go get him. Yeah. You know, God is saying, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting you for you to go get my anointed one. Yes, 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 yes. And I believe God is going to, in these last days, bring his Davids into the forefront. And we've not seen the best. I think the best is still yet to come for his kingdom and for his remnant. Because the Lord wants to put them in his kingdom to use them because he's tired of the entertainers. Sure he is. He's tired of the Jezebel pastors that don't have a backbone and is afraid to preach what thus saith the word of God. Listen, I'm one of the most hated bishops you'll ever meet because I do not care to call out sin, to call it for what it is, and I do not care to speak up. And I have such a boldness about me that it alienates me from a lot of people. I called out my own general secretary for things. And it alienated me with her. And now she doesn't like me. She took me and said she didn't even want me on her property. Took me with a no trespassing warrant. But that's all right. Sin is sin. Wrong is wrong no matter who's doing it. Whether I'm doing it, Bishop Roberts doing it, whether you're doing it, sin is sin. And it will not. Be blessed in the kingdom of God. And we need some men and women of God that will rise up and say, hey, listen, this is the word of God. This is what God wants to do. And God is really wanting to uh, have his church to understand this is not about a prosperity. Well, he wants our soul to prosper. He wants us to be blessed. At the same time, we have to understand that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So if God gives me something to use, I should use that in the body of Christ. I should not be out selling some conference, some word. I shouldn't be selling the Bible because what we become is we come, become a Syrian. When he saw the apostles lay hands upon people and they received the gift of the Holy Ghost, he, he went and he offered them money to buy this gift of the Holy Ghost. And that's what some of us are doing. We're offering to the house of God, to the pastors, to the churches, to buy the blessings or, or, or whatnot. We're using what God has given us and he can't anoint us. So we're still entertainers. Yes, we may have a gift, but God can anoint it. But we have to have a willing heart. And we have to really seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he's going to add the anointing to us. He's going to add all these other things. But <clears throat> as I'm coming to a close, the church doesn't need entertainers. What we need to understand that is in First Quran, Quran, First Corinthians, excuse me, chapter 9, Paul says that I want to become to all Become to all things, to all people, that I may save some, he said. He said, I do this for the gospel's sake. He said, I do it so that I can share my blessings with Bishop Roberts. I can share my blessings with the body of Christ. And that's what we ought to do. We ought to be wanting to bless the body of Christ, wanting to bless someone, wanting to get somebody saved, wanting to get somebody delivered, wanting to get some, but we have commercialized the church and we've got to stop it. Yes, we should pay our tithes. If we're a true Christian, we will. If we're not paying our tithes. I have doubts whether you're a Christian. Yes, I said it. Get over it. I said it. If you're not paying your tithes, you're not a Christian. For peak sakes, we, we wear our feelings on our sleeves. And no, I'm not arrogant. I'm not upset. I'm just telling you in a bold, firm, fatherly voice, get over it. That's the reason a lot of churches isn't making it. Is because we are not doing our part in the kingdom of God. Listen, we pastored in Fremont everything that we did, we had to pay for. Me and Bishop Roberts. 
And if we didn't pay for it, it didn't get done. We gave to missions. We gave to organizations. We gave to this and that cause and this cause and that cause. And the money we received, it always went back to the people. Always. Always has and always will. And we always, and what we will do here locally is anybody who gives them to us, guess what? It will be held a record for everybody to see. And that's one thing you don't have in some churches too is transparency. You know, they bring in thousands and millions of dollars and you don't know where it's going or what's being done with it. God help us. But he closes in here with my last closing statement, then we'll give it to Bishop Roberts to finish it out and close. The Bible says, Go ye therefore, as I said well ago, into all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And he said, Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. That is Matthew 28, 19, and 20. In closing, this is my thought. There's four things the church should be doing right now. Number one, we should go. He said not to take thought. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said not to take thought of where your next meal's coming from. Not to take no raiment, no clothing with you. Just go. But how many of us does that? Where is our faith? Where is our obedience? See, we want to talk about us being Christians, but are we really what we say that we are? See, this kind of gospel makes people upset. It makes them mad. It rubs them wrong because they have a Jezebel spirit. But listen to me, friend. The Bible says to go. Number two, he said to make disciples. How many disciples have we made? We go into churches and baptistries is filled with Christmas stuff. I have a problem with that. We're not making disciples if we're not baptizing. If we're not going out into the highways and the hedges and compelling them to come in that his house may be full. Number three, baptizing them. The church should be baptizing them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin. And they should be receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And number four, we should go into all nations. Maybe we can't go there ourselves, but we can be there through YouTube and Facebook and other internet means. We can give to other missions that can go, missionaries that can go. What are we doing for the body of Christ? Because friend, it's time to stop playing church. It's time to stop commercializing the church. And it's time to stop asking the wrong questions. What does it pay? You know what it pays? The benefits are out of this world. Seek ye first the kingdom, my friend. Then everything else will come. Faith without works is dead. Where's your faith and your obedience? When we get to that place, then we'll see the glory return back to the house of God. Bishop Roberts, close it out for us. Well, number one, we just want to speak to the body of Christ. It's time to pull together. We are stronger together than we are divided. There is plenty of people in the harvest that all the houses can be full. So you don't have to worry about competing with one another. Amen. We're not in a competition with each other. Amen. So let's work together. Let's be united. We are stronger together. So let's be united together, church. Um, number two, we want to give encouragement to those who are struggling as far as, you know, financially. While there are some who are being blessed, God is blessing them, and they are doing well. To you that are not doing so well, we want to pray. We are praying for you that God will bless you and open up doors and open up the windows of heaven upon you. And we also want to give encouragement to those who are overlooked, the Davids that are hidden in the field, that you feel like your talent 
and your gift is not being utilized or that nobody cares. We want you to know, number one, that God cares. And number two, like Elijah, you are not alone. There is a remnant that is reserved unto him. And there are people that are just like you, that want to do it right, that are crying out for revival. And I believe that we are going to see a revival like we have never seen before. It's only going to happen when we do it right. Let's be honest. Let's, let's just tell it the way that it, it is. God doesn't bless a mess. Mm -hmm. But if you want to see true Holy Ghost changing, life-changing revival, it's going to be by a unified body. And it's going to be number two by doing it right. And number three, you got to have the right people in the right place doing the, the right, right thing. thing. So, Bishop, I'll give it back to you. So I just want to say that we bless the name of the Lord Jesus. We thank each and every one of you for taking the moment and the time um, to listen to this broadcast. I knew it was going to be pretty long. That's the reason I wanted to do a part two uh, of the first one that we did and have it completely separate. But we have to stop commercializing the church. And let's be clear. We don't have any axe to grind. No. We don't have any special agendas from a video like this. We're not um, talking to one person in particular. We're talking to the body of Christ as general. But sometimes you have to push the church to make some changes. And that's what we're just trying to do. We're trying to, as in the Bible days, they would call them out for things that were going on. And we're not afraid to talk on the issues. Um and when we see issues, you will see a lot more videos like this in the future. Um, this will not be the last. So, And I will say to you, as Archbishop of the Church of God of the Apostolic Faith International Ministerial Association, it is hereby also my ruling that any person under our ministry will never charge a certain price. If you want to give them a love gift, that's fine but they will never charge a set price to come and they will never ask for a love gift because if they do, this association will address it quickly because we believe in freely giving, freely receiving in the body of Christ. If you want to bless them, great. I praise the Lord for that. But we should not be setting a price on the gospel. The only price that should be set is this, winning souls for Christ. That is what it's about. May God bless you and may God add to the kingdom of God daily as he sees fit, as we become one body in Christ, Jesus our Lord.